Welcome to a new vlog. I really hope you enjoyed the last video where uh, I talked about the new Raspberry Pi 4. People immediately realized it was an uh, April 1st uh, joke, but a lot of work went into making the board, so this video will explain how I did it. When I first started thinking about this uh, beginning of February, I had multiple ideas in my head. One of them was to make a uh, quantum computer Raspberry Pi, but I needed some kind of uh, specially packaged processor like one of those old ceramic gold packages, or I needed to make something out of brass maybe, machined on a latte machine, so it was kind of difficult uh, to make and expensive at the same time. Another idea was to make some kind of Raspberry Pi and slash some big company collaboration, something like uh, Intel or Samsung and it I, it could have used uh, one of their latest processors but once again it was difficult and expensive to get my hands on one of those processors. So I decided to make the uh, Raspberry Pi 4 in the same form factor with uh, a Broadcom processor but I would be tweaking the features on the board quite a bit. There are lots of uh, Broadcom processors available today in consumers uh, networking equipment so I went into my uh, scrap uh, router bin and I uh, salvaged a rather old uh, Broadcom processor from an old router then I wanted to have something like a secondary processor on board and I believe this one came from an old uh, laptop wireless card I wanted the board to have uh, USB Type-C, so I decided to give it 5 ports and I've also decided on the feature list that you could supply power to any of these uh, ports and all the current limiting would be done magically by the power management ICs dedicated to each of these ports. I also wanted the board to do something more than just light up the uh, power LED but obviously I wasn't going to start messing with that uh, BGA processor and get that working. So I decided the best solution would be to hide a um, small microcontroller in plain sight. I went for the um, 80 tiny uh, 10 microcontroller in a SOT236 package because I was already using that um, package right next to the HDMI port for the so-called ESD protection. Both the uh, power LED and the activity LED uh, are connected to the um, ATtiny tiny 10 which sits right here, this guy right here. As soon as power is applied the uh, power LED is turned on and uh, the activity LED is delayed for a few seconds uh, in the code and then it starts flashing a few seconds um, a sequence which is a few seconds long with uh, on off uh, and different uh, delays between. So after a bit more brainstorming on the feature list I started working on the uh, PCB in uh, Eagle CAD. I started with the uh, board outline. I kept the same arrangement for the holes and the uh, 40 pin expansion header. The only parts that were properly connected were the uh, USB Type-C ports which uh, shared a common VCC bus uh, between them and with the ATtiny uh, 10 microcontroller. They were needed for the um, activity and power LED uh, feature that uh, I talked about earlier. I made sure I wouldn't create any short circuits by having a uh, fake VCC bus for routing everything else. I wasn't going to spend uh, hours designing the uh, footprints for the um, BGA processors so I only used a few exposed pads under the BGAs just to um, keep them in place. I hoped the uh, solder would catch on these uh, solder pads and would make the package uh, stay right there. So. This is a, a blank PCB, as you can see I wrote a vault log underneath uh, each of these uh, big packages. The passives are mostly uh, 0402s, 
and uh, some 0603 and 0805s. I didn't want to use too much of them because I knew it would be a pain to get them all placed and uh, soldered on the PCB but I couldn't use just a few because it just wouldn't look real. So in total I had about uh, 60 capacitors and uh, 20 resistors on this board. I also routed some of these um, squiggly traces, these are length match traces, to simulate uh, some high speed differential lanes and even though a, a real Raspberry Pi probably uses 0.1 millimeter traces, let's look here for um, comparison, you can see I, I just have a Raspberry Pi Zero here but we can see the traces are much thinner than what I used, I used 0.2 millimeter traces but they still looked quite okay. I just didn't uh, want to push the manufacturing limits of the fab house. Also I knew the um, shade of uh, green on the solder mask, mask would not match the um, original uh, shade they use on the Raspberry Pi PCBs but there was really nothing I could do about that, it was entirely dependent on the uh, fab house. And on camera it often looks uh, different because of different lighting condition. I added the uh, required logos in the screen, in the silk screen we have the um, C logo, the FCC, the uh, recycle logo, an HDMI logo, the actual Raspberry Pi logo and some uh, text, um, an FCC ID, actually there is an interesting story about the FCC ID, I checked on the FCC website to see if the Raspberry Pi Foundation had, submit, had submitted anything recently, but no, the newest application was the Raspberry Pi uh, Zero uh, Wi-Fi, so I decided to create my own FCC ID and print it on the board, and some people picked that up immediately in the comments, they immediately spotted this is a fake FCC ID. On the back we have the uh, RAM chip, which was salvaged from a Sodim uh, memory module, it's connected the same way with uh, some exposed pads placed under the package and I've also placed a bunch of uh, test pads same as with uh, an original Raspberry Pi. Uh, this label uh, right here that I placed on the, on the board was uh, actually a last minute uh, idea. I literally had a broken hard drive on my workbench that had this label on so I took it off the hard drive and stuck it on the board. Now about the soldering, I knew I wouldn't get decent looking results if I were to solder uh, these components by hand with a soldering iron, so I decided to order a steel stencil for both the top and the bottom side, and I actually have the uh, stencil here, don't know if it will fit in the frame. This is how it looks, it's a laser cut steel stencil without uh, any frame, and it's a bit uh, clogged up with the solder paste. I didn't bother cleaning this up because I knew it was a one-time uh, usage thing, so I will uh, throw this thing away. But you would want to clean this if you were using it uh, to assemble multiple boards. So both the uh, PCBs and the um, stencil were ordered from EasyDA. I used the uh, stencil to apply just a thin layer of uh, solder paste uh, to the board. I started with the back side. After carefully placing all the parts manually, I uh, started heating the board with the hot air gun until the solder paste uh, reflowed nicely. I didn't want to stick the board inside a uh, reflow oven because um, of two reasons. First, I don't have a good quality reflow oven and the one I have would have changed the color of the board, especially of the silk screen, it would have made it a bit darker. That would have been obvious on camera and second, this is a double sided load and the bottom components would have probably fallen off in the uh, reflow oven while uh, it was sitting in there. So after finishing placing the uh, components on the bottom side and heating them up, reflowing them. I moved to the top side, I applied the solder paste the same way with the stencil and I carefully placed the top side components. I then used the same hot air gun and went over the board uh, in sections. 
until all the part all the parts uh, reflowed nicely and uh, as you can see I got some uh, pretty decent uh, results I would say the true hole parts like the uh, connectors were soldered with some lead free water soluble solder wire which made the cleaning very easy I just cleaned it with some uh, tap water and the brush the solder paste I used for the surface mount components is uh, this one it comes from eBay it's pretty popular you can find it in many places in many places and uh, it's nice that it doesn't leave a lot of uh, residue behind so no cleaning was required for that and it's really inexpensive as well it's about three or four dollars for uh, this syringe I liked how uh, my viewers immediately identified the uh, part numbers in the comments someone even noticed the ESD protection is in series with the data lines on the HDMI port some noticed the um, uh, power management ICs are in fact some uh, microchip uh, I2C EEPROMs uh, so that was uh, interesting some of the parts on this board were salvaged while others I had to buy for example I had to purchase all the connectors the USB type C the Ethernet connector the HDMI connector and this uh, flat flex um, connector I also had to purchase uh, uh, the 0402 passives the uh, small EEPROMs and uh, some uh, some of these uh, SOT 236 ICs that were randomly randomly picked plus the 80 tiny 10 microcontroller the PCB plus uh, stencil was ordered from EZA.com and the uh, total cost for five boards plus DHL shipping was around 80 bucks the cost of the parts I've ordered is around $30 so in total this board was um, around $110 to make plus uh, a lot of hard work that went into it so as you saw this thing is uh, quite real uh, it's not a Raspberry Pi 4 real but it is a real board it exists and uh, it does blink some LEDs it took some hours of uh, preparation and work to get it done so I really hope you enjoyed the video uh, it certainly looked so from the number of uh, views and likes the video got but I also got a bunch of dislikes on the video so there were clearly people who uh, do not appreciate this kind of uh, video but for me it was fun to work on such a project and I think the overall response was positive so I think I'll do it again next year. That was all for today. I will see you next time.